Go ahead. All right. Um, our presentation is titled Going the Distance, Heart Rate Control by Nathaniel Merchant, Logan Clark, Tyler Thatcher, and Stefan Gentile. Um, at last year's, I guess this year's, student versus faculty relay competition, we saw a lot of great talent both on the faculty and the student side. So <laughs> we were inspired to <coughs> come up with a way to optimize everyone's training for next year's competition so that way we can be that much more competitive. And this presentation describes how we went about accomplishing this goal. First off, we needed to get a model for the heart rate and how it was affected by two inputs, pace and percent grade. So <coughs> we decided that Tyler Thatcher would run on a treadmill with a heart rate monitor to get this data that we needed. He ran at three different paces. The paces were seven, eight, and 10 miles per hour and three different grades of minus three, zero, and five percent. And once this data was collected, it was then able to be put into Excel and graphed, and this served as our step test for the two inputs that we had. So the top graph here, we can see the manipulated variables, both the pace and the percent grade. And we used a modified first order plus dead time model with both the pace and the incline. We found out how each one of these affected the heart rate, and then we summed them to get a model. And we found both the gains and the tuning co and the time constants for both pace and percent grade by minimizing the sum of squares. And you can see on the bottom graph how our model approximates the heart rate of the runner on the treadmill. After we had the FOPDT constants um, for both grade and speed. Uh, we created a model in MATLAB um, to, so we could control um, the heart rate based on the variables. Um, the control variable was heart rate, the manipulated variable was speed, and the disturbance variable was incline. And with our model, we, decided, we tried to come up with um, PI, PI, con PI constants that would accurately model the body. Um, so we said like, it took a few seconds to change speed, because we thought that was relatively accurate for how long it would take a human to change speed, so we uh, set our PI constants accordingly. And with that, we were able to, um, that when we put uh, our, our four different grades, um, the grade changes over time, we got this model of speed versus time um, that Tyler should run to maintain a constant heart rate of 160 beats per minute. And as you can see, um, he, according to our model, he would maintain between 155 and 160 beats per minute if you ran at that speed uh, based on those inclines. With applying this model, we chose an area in Provo that had varying slope change, that had varying slopes. Here is the map of the course that we used. It has four different transition points with different uh, elevation changes. So for every mile, we had an elevation change and uh, that gave us a percent grade. Here shows the different percent grades for each interval. So for a downhill, there was a negative percent grade. For uphill, positive. And it also shows the ma manipulated speed that Tyler, in this case, would have to run to maintain a constant heart rate. So for a, um, a lower percent grade, we had a higher speed. And for an uphill, grade, we had a lower speed. Uh, the, mono the, the model manipulated a speed, and that was our, di the disturbance variable was that, was, was that percent grade. And in conclusion, we can apply this model given a heart rate step test for anybody. And so we would need to do a heart rate step test for uh, Big Joe, and he would have different, um, uh, different speeds he would need to maintain in order to keep that heart rate constant. So that's our presentation. Okay, great. So let me just ask a, a few questions. This is, you know, to go 11 miles per hour, okay, and or 12 miles per hour on flat and maintain 160 beats per minute. That isn't typical. 
Not okay. typical. Okay, yeah. So, so <laughs> the subject for this is all American yeah. uh, runner and uh, one of the top runners in the nation. So a little bit of a skewed data. Okay. So how how would this be able to be applied, maybe to an average runner or if the runner changed? You know, what, what do you guys think? How would you do this? Um, well, like Logan said at the end of the presentation, we'd have to do um, a heart rate step test for each individual person to know that would just kind of give us a clue of what kind of shape they're in mm -hmm. to know how much a step actually affects them so we get basically a different gain. Okay, so well, let's say you use the Tyler Thatcher controller on uh, somebody else that's an average runner. Um, what do you think would happen? You had the controller trying to maintain 160 beats per minute. What do you guys think would happen in that case? What would the controller do? Tell them to go at an unreasonable speed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> start off at an unreasonable speed. They quickly get up to 160, and then would it? Uh, so the controller would also make some corrections too, right? It would it would back off because it would yeah. see that you're uh, have have met or exceeded that value, and so feed through feedback, it would still be able to control. The performance might not be as good as a, uh, when Tyler's actually yeah. running because it was built for him. But um, okay, good. So. Um, all right. Well, excellent presentation. Let me go ahead and stop.